Dr. Shaka, you are accused of having a theory uh, that is uh, a racist, a white racist theory. How do you respond to that? Well, I respond to that by saying that I've considered whether or not I am a racist. Racist is an epithet that used to damage my self-esteem, but it doesn't anymore. I feel it's untrue. If you look in the dictionary as to what racist means, it means uh, emotional feelings, irrational feelings associated with fear and hate. If I really had those, I don't think I would be here this evening. I feel that uh, what I'm engaged in is a demand for diagnosis, and I'd like to say some more about this chart, which we'll, we'll come to probably later, which shows the disproportionate rates of reproduction for the least effective elements of the black community. I'd like to say more about that than we should in just this brief introduction. But uh, I think there is another word that better describes what I'm involved in, and that word is raceology, which means a scientific analysis of racial differences. And I uh, basically, I have a faith that reason is a good thing, and I feel, uh, as you do about the First Amendment, but maybe with a slightly different emphasis. I think the really important thing about the First Amendment is it is a way of guaranteeing a high likelihood the truth will emerge as a result of conflict, conflicting ideas being expressed, and I have a thesis and a basic belief the truth is a good thing and will be a benefit to man. But now let me say this chart that I held up a moment ago is very important in respect to this question of why I think uh, there may be what proves a basic difference, but I'm going to say that if there were not a basic difference and in, uh, intellectual capacity in the past, there probably will be a basic difference between black and white intellectual capacity in the future, simply because of the reproduction patterns. And these are Census Bureau data, and this is the most threatening aspect. And what it indicates is that for the black women of the lowest intellectual social class, uh, which are rural farm women, generally the education is least, the average number of children is 5.4. For women with um, college degrees, it's 1.9. And um, so this is definitely unfavorable. It is, it is reproducing far more at the bottom end and not enough to keep even at the top end. Dr. Shockley, can for whites, you uh, let me just finish this. For whites, the numbers are also in this direction, but nowhere nearly as, uh, as severe. Dr. Shockley, I think that um, in all fairness, you should explain to the audience why it is that you have, first of all, you have a very large segment of the black population who are uh, on farms, who are deprived in cities. Why don't you explain at the time that you're showing this, why, who is keeping black people in a situation like they're in? I mean, it could be, you could turn it around the other way where you could have very large numbers of black people who are exposed to educational opportunities like white people, who are exposed to housing, who are exposed, exposed to health facilities. Why don't you explain that at the same time that you put well, figures I'm, like I'm that? I'm sure you would explain it uh, no, but to I Dr. Think it's Welsing, important but uh, one must say fine. first things first. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you raised the basic question there, and that is whether the disadvantages are primarily a lack of opportunity or whether they are primarily a basic genetic difference. And let me mention one thing which is that in certain areas there is no doubt about black superiority. Blacks are superior in visual acuity, and they're superior in a systematic way. Now, I, uh, I don't expect that people will understand the details of this, but I simply want to show that quantitative work can be done. This happens to be a research job of my own. And what it shows, because these points that you see here lie on a, on a line, which is not the, the central line, but they lie systematically on a line, what it says is that so far as visual acuity is concerned, blacks are systematically better than whites. It's as if their bell-shaped curve, their distribution curve, were pushed upwards compared to whites for visual acuity, or at least for the avoidance of bad eyesight, such that if the same shift occurred for IQ, it would mean that the average IQ distribution would be up by nine points rather than down by about 15 points, which is the typical average. I was wondering if Dr. Shaw would explain the basic difference between his, the course he is taking in explaining white supremacy and the course that Hitler took in, in, uh, during the Nazism reign. Thank you. Well, there are enormous differences. In fact, uh, the lesson to be learned from Nazi history is frequently very misunderstood. And it is a lesson which Mr. Brown has told us about earlier. It's the First Amendment. It's not that eugenics is intolerable. 
actually the eugenic programs, which are the opposite of dysgenics, uh, eugenic programs uh, are not inconceivable, they're not inhumane. Denmark has been carrying out programs with strong eugenic implications for maybe 30 years. And it's important to note that since World War II, Denmark's per capita homicide rate dropped and is now approximately 1 20th. That is, the number of deaths of probability of being killed in a year by, uh, by a violent homicide is roughly, oh, the order of 100 times less for young Danes than it is for young American blacks. Can I? Now, the, uh, uh, but the lesson, let me say, what uh, the, the lesson of Nazi history we have in this country, and it will protect us, it's just the thing that makes this program possible. The First Amendment, which allows freedom of speech, if one believes that is not the right answer, then one has to be one of the most anti-German racists that can be. If one believes that the German people would have tolerated the concentration camps and the gas chambers, if news media, like uh, the programs that Mr. Brown is setting on, if those people were willing to bring uh, discordant views out of the open, I don't believe the concentration camps and the gas chambers could have continued to exist in Germany. I would like to ask a question, and Dr. Shockley, if you could answer it, uh, yes or no, I would appreciate it. Do you believe that black people are inferior in intelligence because of their heredity? I have a standard statement. It is not yes or no. It's memorized. I say at the same time every, every time, I think. What I say is this. My research leads me, and it's a tragic conclusion, really. Uh, my research leads me inescapably to the opinion that the major cause of the American Negro's intellectual and social deficits is hereditary and racially genetic in origin and thus not remediable to a major degree by practical improvements in environment. All right, if you believe that uh, the position relatively of black Americans to white Americans is based on a genetic inferiority, and I will accept the responsibility for that word, uh, then what do you see as the solution to the problem? Well, I see the first uh, aspect of this is to prevent the problem from becoming worse by dysgenics. This first word that Would you I, uh, that translate I mentioned, dysgenics what, what for I, me and the audience? Uh, what Would I that be sterilization? Is, no. Dysgenics, you see, means what that other chart I showed you says. Should blacks... But the least effective element. Should blacks be sterilized? Uh, no. I have a... Uh, this but if then blacks gets are a the, problem and we, and we do not allow... This is inhumane. And Dr. I think Shabby one can find more humane to solutions to this. Well, then, then how would... So. Then, then, I would propose something in which one of the key clauses, phrases, is regardless of sex, race, or welfare status. And this is the proposal. I call it a thinking exercise. It's mentioned in that pamphlet that I showed that you can obtain. Um, and it goes this way, that you would offer a bonus to everyone to be sterilized. Now, we know we have a population explosion problem. We know that in India, that bonuses in the form of transistor radios would are this offered bonus to people. Be, oh, would this bonus be directed to black people specifically, more Mr. than white? Brown, Mr. Brown, what did I say just a moment ago? I said, regardless of sex, race, or welfare status. Now, there is a group, there is a group, of, I say, uh, there is a group of white people to whom this offer this should be made also. Absolutely. Well, now the offer, the, the offer is based, the offer is based upon the best estimates, best scientific estimates that one can have of any genetically carried disabilities. The more functional skin pigment cells in the animal kingdom, the higher you are on the scale of phylogenetic ascension. In other words, nature in the course of evolution went to its highest state when it produced a cell that could produce pigment and that we were sliding backwards. The mutation to albinism is a step backwards in the, in the scale of evolution. Are you aware of that, Dr. Shockley? No, I'm not aware of that uh, particular one. I am aware of another basic genetic difference, and that is that the rate of maturation of a neurological system gets uh, longer and longer the more advanced the animal is. And there is, that is one of the items on the racial difference, that the neurological development of blacks is faster than whites. Black ba babies walk on the average a month earlier than white babies. And the period and of black uh, gestation... And black people are much more creative also.